Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. What's going on in the garden on the average last frost date? Let's take a look around and have a bit of a tour and talk about some upcoming plans. All that's left in the garden right now are my winter and fall crops. Here in zone 9A you can grow throughout the year and we had a very good winter garden. Here's the problem with having so many growing seasons, uh, distinct growing seasons. We've got winter slash fall. I treat that as one season. Some people treat it as two. We have spring and we have summer. But with those right up next to each other, there's very little time in between gardens to do, say, a, a cover crop or to just take your garden out and let it lay fallow for a month or two. So um, what we have to do <clears throat> is take our, our winter crops that we still desire, that are still growing well, but maybe haven't produced as much food as we need out of that plot and let them continue on. My kohlrabi back there, for example, it's just now starting to bulb up. So uh, I'd really like to get some kohlrabi. Well, that's where my tomatoes are going to go. So I need to get some of my tomatoes in that area right over there. Um, well, right now I'm hardening off my tomato seedlings and some of them are going to go there. So I might not get some kohlrabi. I need to get those tomatoes in. Uh, they need to get started. Now the weather has turned and it's time. Um, but sometimes if you've got some things like these carrots that are over here, uh, I'm going to just keep harvesting those. This bed will have mostly peppers in it, so I can leave those in and clear a little spot and plant a pepper plant in the midst of those carrots and do some intercropping and overlap the seasons. Uh, my cabbage is coming out. Uh, all my daikon radishes behind me, they're gone. That bed is ready, so yeah, let's take a look around and see what is left. We'll begin our tour with the garlic bed. The garlic looks healthy. A lot of these leaves have died back, you can see from freezes, but garlic will push through. And I need to mulch this bed now. And now that I see where the garlic is, I know garlic will push through mulch, but I need to get some mulch on top of there, some more mulch. There's some leaves there, but a lot of that has uh, degraded. Dill, planted with the garlic there, is looking, well, there's some nice dill in here. Some of it's turned yellow and needs to be pruned off. Look at this borage, man. This is a self-seeded borage volunteer. I had some boards planted here last year. This was an herb garden last year. But uh, yeah, look at that. Bees love this. That's so beautiful. One of the most beautiful flowers, I think. It's a beautiful plant. Here's some of the potted trees, and I've shown you these before. They're looking terrible. And I'll tell you why in the fig pruning video when we clean these trees up. Uh, they are starting to look like they want to break bud now, so it's time to prune. This one especially is in bad shape. It's got some dead stuff on the sides here from the freeze. Look at all that. So we need to come in and really take a good look at these trees and get them cleaned up. Same thing over here. Some of these trees need serious attention. Some of them don't. But I'll show you that in a separate video. I'm going to do a, a fig pruning video. I've done them before. But uh, yeah, all these figs, they survived the freeze last year. They only grew a little bit because they were so stunted by that freeze but they're ready to break out again. Look at that beautiful tree. My cabbages and brassicas, these are the last three. And they're looking awful because, well, they're ready to be harvested way past a prime harvesting time. But they're just storing here in the, in the garden for me. And you can see they've got some, some uh, mold and some sunburn on the heads there. But that's okay, you just peel that off and underneath you've got a perfectly good cabbage. In fact, I harvested that one last night and it was delicious. We've got some broccoli here and it needs to be harvested today because you can see it's starting to go to a flower. And uh, well, you can still eat this, but I'd rather it look more like that. That's a lot of broccoli on there. This is the plant we harvested our big head from and left it there, gave us some more. My citrus. This tree is just naturally more yellow. I give it all the fertilizer it could possibly want. But this is one of the few that has kept its leaves. And I'm not sure why, but this tree is a variegated lemon, and I think that's a Meyer lemon. These trees just dropped all their leaves as citrus trees are prone to do. They will just get fussy on you, and well, they stayed inside a lot during the freezing time, and I think that stressed them out. But look at them. Look at the blossoms they're putting on. So these trees are very much alive and will be pushing out leaves very soon now that it's nice and warm. There's nothing better than the smell of a citrus blossom. Nice, huh? 
course these will be moved I just had them out here to cover the holes that I had in my weed cloth and we'll take up this weed barrier and get this bed going in earnest but yeah the winter garden still has produce in the ground I love the way carrots look we've got some good carrots down in here let's pull one up oh god that's nice huh a little bit small but hey that's a good eating carrot right there carrots are one of my favorite winter crops I plant them and grow them through the winter they handle the freezes just fine I've never had carrots give any trouble I've had carrots with snow on them and they just uh, yeah they just keep going got a couple varieties in here these are I don't remember the varieties that's the problem and I can't find my tags I would have, have to actually go back and watch my video when I planted these to find out what kind of carrots they are there we go Isn't that pretty so these carrots will stay in here until they're all harvested and I'll make a little space like this a little hole like this if I need to put a plant in I'll harvest from that area and I'll drop there's pepper plants going in right here I'll drop them in so right now though we're gonna eat some carrots this is not a welcome guest in the garden this is some kind of caterpillar he gets to become compost in place cover him up a little dirt give a firm push and he's been liquefied. I have some wonderful collard greens here. This is beautiful stuff. Look at that. Big old leafy collard green. Hardly any bug damage in here right now. I did have some frost damage on the tips of some of these plants uh, earlier in the year. And you can see the, the dead leaves down below. And those leaves that are getting shaded out finally from this plant really growing. These plants are real healthy. And yeah, I've got a bunch of collard greens. So what we're going to do is harvest these greens this week and either eat them or figure out how we want to preserve them. If you have any methods on preserving collard greens, I'd like to hear them. Put it down in the comments for me because I don't want this to go to waste, but it's a busy week. I don't know if we'll have time to cook them. Collard greens, man, looking great. My celery, wow, looking great. I have a video on blanching celery. That's what these tubes are. These tubes keep the sun off the stalks so that they won't be dark green and bitter. It makes them light. And I'm going to harvest one here and show you what they look like. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to use my brand new grafting knife to cut the tape here. I don't like getting brand new knives dirty with tape, but well, we'll do it for the sake of my viewers. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. So what we expect in here is a bunch of dead leaves, but nice stalks. So there's our dead leaves, and you can see down in here some really nice blanched celery stalks. So we'll kind of pull that out a little bit. There we go. I'm not going to get dirt on my nice Felco pruners. Dirt ruins the blades. But what you do is just pick all this stuff off all this dead leaves that were inside that tube and you've got these beautiful blanched celery stalks down in here. I've been real impressed with the celery. It grew like a champ. Didn't get frost damaged very much. So what we have here is homegrown celery. And I have, let's see, two, five, I've got nine this makes 10. I've got 10 stalks of celery, 10 bunches of celery that I grew myself. That's awesome. Looking over here at bed number three, we've got some kohlrabi growing. And boy, I pulled a nice plump one up yesterday and had a taste. It's delicious. And you can see down there, they are continuing to plump up. If you've followed my garden tours or my garden channel at all, you've probably seen these. But they're starting to plump up down in there. And that's encouraging. So, uh, they got a week to go. I'm going to have to have them pretty much out in a week because I need my tomatoes to go in there. Here are my peas. Got different kind of peas. They're still blossoming. These could probably stay on the edge where they're growing while I put my um, tomatoes in here. But yeah, they're growing quite lush over here. These are Amish snap peas. Down here, the dead ones, these are snow peas not snow peas sugar snaps 
and yeah they didn't handle the frost very well i'm surprised generally they make it through just fine but there is growth still going on and well this makes excellent compost or green manure so i may take all that nasty looking mess and just turn it into the soil so yeah this is a wonderful beautiful bed i really enjoyed it i did have that aphid infestation here but you can see the rutabagas in the middle here uh, they survived they were a trap crop we were allowing these to uh, keep the aphids in place they preferred this they didn't like the kohlrabi you can see there's a stark difference healthy plants there when you get to the the rutabagas oh they're almost destroyed and of course they didn't eat the radishes but i'm getting some rutabagas out of here you can see there's one kind of split down there but they're starting to plump up uh, that one's looking nice and healthy down here we've got our giant radishes i pulled one up not too long ago they don't taste good i don't like them they were kind of grown as a novelty so these are fresh compost but they are beautiful plants aren't they let's pull one up all right i pulled one of these up on video before and i was surprised how big it was we've got a little one here that hasn't even started to bulb up this plant here intrigues me it's got a big root on it Ugh. There we go looks like a daikon yeah i don't like these so instant compost free compost we're going to pull all these out of here now what we're going to do is we're going to come and flame weed where we have bare ground flame weeding just knocks back the weeds on the surface and it gives a cleaner look to your garden i enjoy flame weeding it's fun. All right. That's the last of our Japanese radishes. Want to see something funny? Look at this daikon. This daikon radish seed was planted in this hole just to see if it would grow there. <laughs> Not only did it grow there, it grew huge. And when I was trying to pull it out, I snapped the greens off of it. Now I can't get it out. So... What I'll probably end up doing is just taking a shovel and, you know, lifting this brick out and seeing if we can work that guy out. He moves a little bit, but it won't come out. I got nothing to pull on. So, how would you get this thing out? I guess picking the brick up and shoving it out from the bottom is about the only, the only answer. But I'm going to leave that there and see what happens as it grows in the spring. <laughs> it's not in the way. Who knows, maybe we'll get some seeds. Lucy the lemon tree, my Meyer lemon tree, grew back from being frozen. And down at the bottom here, I uh, took careful notice of where it was growing from. And it is growing from above the graft union. So it is true to type. It's not some weird, you know, rootstock. Needs a good prune, though. Needs to be cleaned up. Got some strawberries over here. They got knocked by the freeze a little bit, but... They're coming back, and the runners did root, you know, put a little dirt on them, and uh, they, they rooted. So we'll have a bit, bit of a strawberry patch here. Look at that nice little blossom there. I ate my first strawberry out of here a couple days ago. More strawberries harmed by the freeze. You can see they, they really just froze back, but, yeah, strawberries are hardy. They're going to be fine. We've got some more over here in my berry bed. Onions. Looking good. I need to get some mulch on that bed. But uh, we planted these a while back and they've just been troopers. I have this bare space here. What should I put there, folks? What grows next to onions? Well, I could research it myself, but I'd rather ask you. Right here is my uh, thornless blackberry plant. I don't know why it's purple. Maybe that's just a natural. I don't know. It seems like a reaction or something. But. Uh, there's some green leaves starting to come out, but this is a nice plant. I don't need to do any pruning on this one this year. Got some strawberries down in here. Yeah, this, this is going to do good. In yesterday's video, I showed you how to prune these apple tree whips and notch where we want branches to grow. We want to shape the scaffolds on these trees. That's what we're doing this year, shaping. This tree got shaped up a little bit. This is a plum tree. And, uh, yeah, doing great. Everything's looking good. Yeah. 
right in here I've got some backup tomato plants growing. I've got some squash going back there. Didn't have good germination rate on those. And I've got some peppers back there as well. Uh, but right here, I have one of my two single seed challenges. So there we go. This is the hot Portugal chili pepper that was sent to me by, by John over at Will It Grow. And we've got a seedling. This is my single seed challenge that has worked. And you can see there that it is nice and healthy. I've got a couple of set of true leaves just beginning to emerge. And I've got a lot of algae on here because I've been keeping it in this humid container here. But this is ready to be opened up now. These guys need to be potted up. And these guys need to go out in the garden. So I'm going to take the humidity dome off now. My other sing single seed challenge did not come up. In fact, don't know if you can see there. It did not come up. This was the second try on my fish pepper that was sent to me by Rachel at Oxheart Gardening. So I've had two strikeouts there and I'm going to have to start over. So I have some more seeds in here that she sent me, this fish pepper. I'll try again with that one. I really want a fish pepper. But uh, yeah, John at Will It Grow sent me this hot Portugal pepper in his own pa packaging. I think he grew these and uh, saved the seeds and we've got one. So that's nice. We're going to have a lot of varieties of peppers in the garden this year and starting them indoors early has been very good. I have a Clementine F1 hybrid here in this row. My Roma tomatoes are coming up. And then over here in the third row, I've got some Martha Washingtons. These are a determinant variety. Looking forward to growing some of those in containers. Back here, I've got the uh, Gochujang King, uh, Korean chili. Uh, I don't know if that's they're, they're all, yeah, most of those came up. And then I've got a few varieties of squash back there. So we're, we're really looking forward to spring. People often tell me that they want to avoid leggy tomatoes. And they ask, how do I avoid growing my tomatoes with all that stem? I mean, that can't be good for the plant, can it? You know what? Leggy tomatoes, it, it, it doesn't matter. Tomatoes can be planted all the way up to here. You can just pick these leaves off, these two cotyledons down here. And just plant your seed way up, uh, your seedling way up to there, and it'll do just fine. All these hairs have potential to become roots. You can even lay your plant down and bend it up, plant it in the trench. Leggy tomatoes don't matter. Uh, leggy peppers, on the other hand, you can plant them as well. Uh, I tend to plant them up to the original cotyledons here, these uh, seed leaves. Uh, pluck those off and plant it up there. And, well... They, they too, since they're also um, able to form roots along the stem, uh, can be planted deeper, but they're, they're not as readily uh, fit for that kind of treatment. So, yeah, with something like this, I'd plant it up to about here. And on some of these varieties, if they don't look like they're naturally branching and they're small chili peppers, I might top them and force out new growth. This is a bell pepper. I'll probably leave it alone. But, uh, yeah, those peppers, they need to get out there. Uh, they are... Getting too big for out here. Here's one I want to show you that is naturally branching. This is a cayenne pepper. And you can see that in here, it's got lots of growth in, lots of sucker growth in between these branching, these leaves. And uh, you can see new branches coming up. So that's going to branch out just fine. In fact, last year I grew that variety and it was a wonderful branching chili pepper. Didn't have to do any kind of pruning. So there's a little seed update, uh, seedling update. I want to give you a Phoebe update. Come here, Phoebe. Phoebe is now out of her cone, and she's no longer in her, uh, her donut to keep her from licking her surgery wound. Come here. Come here. Everybody wants to see you. Come here. She gets around pretty well, but she still has to go outside on a leash in her own backyard, and that's to keep her from bolting. And, uh, you know, she's still healing up from major knee surgery. She's got this huge bear patch back there. That we think it's kind of funny, but I'm sure she's pretty chilly. But Phoebe's doing well. Thank you for all your questions, your support, and your love for our garden dog. Here are my two trees from Ison's Nursery. I like Ison's Nursery. I bought my muscadines there. But I've got an early grand uh, peach tree, and I have an Anna apple tree. This is the Anna that I lost to the same variety I lost uh, earlier in this year. So what we're going to do is we're going to plant these. Uh, it's nice that it's about the same size as my existing apples, so it doesn't have a lot of catching up to do. But uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to get this Anna growing. So these are bare root; they're dormant. I've got a few days really to sit around on these. Don't have to get them in the ground just yet. But uh, 
got a lot of other work to do, but we will treat these in the same way. These are wonderful trees, and I'm looking forward to some fruit. So, yeah, man, another project. You can never have enough garden projects, huh? Yeah, so that's the state of the garden here, right around our average last frost date. It's hot, I'm sweating. The garden looks kind of rugged, ragged, and shaggy. Things are dying off, things are still giving, some things are still giving some produce, and that makes me happy. All right, man, thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I will uh, be posting many videos in the upcoming weeks because it's go time. And we've got a lot to do. So we've got to clear these beds and interplant where we're not clearing. And there'll be videos on all that. So thanks for coming along and walking through my garden with me. And we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you.